All right, this tab right here, we're going to be looking at the D DTCs, uh, basically for the one for your trouble codes or check engine light if you have that on. Um, and I'm going over this one. This should pretty be pretty easy, but I see a lot of people uh, having trouble with this tab for whatever the reason. But basically, what I will say is, as far as the boxes over here, you're basically unchecking anything you want ignored to not come up as a check engine light. So, for example, um, let's say if you have an O2 sensor that was removed, let's say a rear O2, or you have a bad O2 sensor. If you would normally have your fault code come up here, okay, if you don't want to see that, you uncheck this box, okay. I see people unchecking every single one of these, and the problem with that is if you have a problem in that area, let's say for closed loop or fuel trim, for example, you're not going to see a fault code come up and your check engine light will never come on and the ECU will think that everything is functioning properly even though it may not be. So when you're looking for a ECL or um, I'm sorry not ECL a uh, CEL or check engine light to come on it's not going to. The computer is going to think everything's functioning as normal when it may not be. So the thing I would do, and of course, if you're not having an automatic and a manual, this automatic transmission one is really going to make no difference. Okay, you would want to maybe remove the uh, the check mark from the EVAP or EGR or MDP. If you've removed emissions, you've removed your EGR valve, or you have removed your MDP that is on a stock 2G uh, sense or a the sensor that's on top of the stock manifold on a 2G. Okay, if you're not using that, or let's say if you have a uh, map sensor in the place of that, you may want to uncheck this one. Okay, if you have if you've removed your O2 sensor for the rear, you can uncheck this one for that one as well. The thing you have to keep in mind is that if you have a problem with either O2 sensor there, this one is not going to come on. So if you uncheck it. Um, it's, you're not going to have a check engine light for either one. You're basically going to be having to look at your data logs to know if you have a good O2 sensor or not. But that's the good thing about having Link. You can basically look at that and see if it's working as it should. You just have to know what to look for. Other than that, I'm usually keeping fuel trim, closed loop, and idle control on here at a minimum. Now what I will say is that for this is for a second gen. Um, if you have a first gen and you're watching this video, you're going to have about six different tabs. Um, still the same ones apply that would normally be removed as far as uh, the CAT or EVAP. Those are ones you're probably going to want to remove. The rest of them are going to stay, stay checked. Uh, what I will say is that if you have one for cylinder misfire, normally no matter what, I'm unchecking this one regardless. Um, there are certain situations where um, let's say if you use a first gen uh, cam position sensor uh, and, and a 2G, uh, depending on the situation, it may cause a misfire just by having this one checked. Um, it, it, sometimes by clearing this one right here, it can, it can clear that issue. Okay, um, So I usually just have it unchecked anyway. Uh, normally if I have a misfire, it's something I can feel. So I really don't need the ECU telling me that I have a misfire. I can usually tell. So um, but that's up to you if you want to keep that one on. Uh, also, too, which should be self-explanatory. Now, mine is cleared out up here. I don't have any codes, but normally if you have a code, that's going to be displayed up here up at the top. It's going to tell you whatever the trouble is and then the description, which basically spells it out for you. Uh, front O2 sensor, whatever the problem is, it's usually going to spell it out for you. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind is that it's only going to display three codes. So if you have more than three codes and that's a problem, you have no way of scrolling through to see what all the codes are. Okay, so that's something you would need to keep in mind. So if you clear these codes, you're only going to have three codes displayed. You may have more than that. So just be aware of that. You can also, let's say if the car is running, you can update all to see if anything new pops up. Uh, you can also clear them, uh, keeping in mind that if when you clear the code, sometimes it may take a little while before that code pops up if you have an issue. Just because you have an issue doesn't mean they're always going to pop up right away. Uh, the other thing, too, is that sometimes you may have a code down here when it may not be displayed on your on your dash. So sometimes it's good to check your uh, DC, DTCs tab to see if you have any codes here because they may not always display on your dash. Okay. 
uh, section down here at the bottom, the OBD2 readiness. Um, basically, if you have your emissions in check, your O2 sensors in check, this should be complete. Uh, I don't really ever have to deal with this one. I don't have emissions in my area where I have to check that one, but um, this is what you're going to be looking for uh, for that area. Okay, so um, just so that you're aware of what that is or what it's for. It's basically just making sure that everything's in check as it should be. Okay, um, but basically that takes care of this tab. Like I said, if you have any questions, just holler at me.